What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So uh, today we're gonna talk about core for power lifters. Um, I've done a video on this in the past, but it was a long time ago, so for the newer subs, I wanna to touch on this again. Go watch that video, because I cover a lot more exercises. But something I wanna discuss is, is you hear a lot of different trains of thought around training your core for powerlifting. Some people say it's all about bracing, other people say it's all about doing you know, variations like front squats, good mornings, or whatever it may be. And other people are big proponents of like isolation type exercises, anything from you know, stir the pot to goblet squats, or whatever it may be. I'm a proponent of a little bit of everything. If I had to put a percentage on everything, I would say it's about 50% bracing, about maybe 35% uh, bigger compound variations, things like your front squats, your good mornings, whatever. And then lastly, that last little 15% or so is gonna be cer uh, certain isolation movements you can do that'll really help out. And I'm gonna show you my favorite one today that I think is probably a necessity for anyone who power lifts. And every time I neglect them, and I know this because I've been neglecting them lately, I start tipping a little bit more in my squat. Something I've always gotten a lot of compliments on is even though I'm very lanky in my legs, I'm able to stay extremely upright in the squat. I don't tip even at maximum loads. The reason why is because of how I train my core. I have, um, I'm really good at bracing. I do a lot of variations. I've front squatted 455 before for a best single max. Um, I've also done uh, a ton of core work too. Uh, in isolation and that's really brought it up and so today we're going to cover that because I think there's enough videos out there on how to brace I have those on other variations like good mornings or front squats or, or whatever it may be for training the core and do remember when we say core we mean the abs the obliques uh, psoas transverse abdominis the rectors everything in your centerpiece we're not talking just about the abs I think a lot of people uh, misconstrue that so today my favorite is this guy these guys are uh, 70 pounds um, kettlebells. It's not extremely heavy. Like I said, I've front squatted 455 before, but this is going to be more of like a movement drill. And I guess you could say, for lack of a better term, you want to focus more on proper activation and position and movement. And I'm going to do these with the tempo. So save the overload and going really heavy for the front squats, the good mornings, the high bar beltless work, stuff like that. You can overload, you know, with the barbell going heavy. This stuff, less is more, and it's more about movement here. So I'm gonna show you how I do these goblet front squats. Oh, they're a bitch to get into position. So when doing these, you gotta focus first on ensuring your feet are grounded. If you actually don't get your big toe down, your heel and your pinky toe, the quarter and the glutes aren't gonna fire right and everything's gonna get distributed really awkwardly to this movement. So make sure your feet are grounded really well and that big toe is staying in contact with the ground the same time that the heel is and you're really getting a proper position. So I'm gonna show you from the front what this looks like. We're gonna bring this around, brace up top. Now the idea here is to get vertical. Don't lean back like this. Don't lean too far forward. Just get nice upright and down. Drop straight down to the ass. Bottom position. Come straight up. Talking with this is really hard, so bear with me. And then from the side. Now when you do those, you're gonna feel your upper back get taxed, especially if you get heavier on them. You're gonna feel the core, the interior core get taxed. You may even feel the erectors. Now what I will say is try to pull it away from the erectors. Draw in your stomach. Instead of bracing how we normally do when we do the front squats, I do this a little bit differently and get that TVA, the transverse abdominis and the obliques and the psoas. And I try to make everything in here tall and long and drawn in and tight. So instead of blowing out like we normally do, I'm kind of training a different function of the core. Um, and when I'm going from the side, I'm really focused on keeping my um, pelvis underneath me and as I descend down into that hole, I'm trying to keep all this tall and straight 
and the pelvis down underneath me. So you don't want to overextend and you don't want to tuck like this. You want to keep everything nice and neutral and long. When you do them, everyone's going to feel them in a little different of a place, but we really want to take a lot of that tension in that interior portion of the core and that uh, mid upper back. If you're feeling it in your low back a lot, you probably need to go a little bit lighter and work on that drawing in motion. Now, if you haven't seen the other core video, go watch that because I go more in depth over some other exercises I like. But again, if I could only choose one, it would definitely be this guy. It's something I'm adding back into my programming because I've been neglecting this. And even right now, just doing these for the first time in a few months, I'm like, I'm gonna feel this tomorrow. So if you guys have any questions, leave it down below. Uh, give the video a thumbs up and share it, please. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.